over the next couple of years, we watched the Wide 5 transform from a nice buck into a giant. This week's show is a story that goes back several years and it's about a buck that we always knew would be incredible. And it just may be my favorite episode that we've ever produced simply because of the events that happened along the way. When we first found the deer back in 2009, we knew that he was young and showed all the signs of having amazing potential. But you never know what that potential may be. At three years old, we wanted to start documenting the life of this buck. So we headed in to get some footage of the young wide five. Still young and thin horn, this was our first good look at him up close and our first good footage of him. And it was apparent that with his spread, long beams and tines, that if he survived a few years, there was a good chance he'd be something very special. Over the next couple of years, we watched the Wide Five transform from a nice buck into a giant. Year after year, we watched in amazement how the deer that we'd nicknamed the Wide Five grew taller and wider with each season's passing, well on his way to becoming a truly world-class typical. And the only thing as amazing as his continued growth was his near-perfectly symmetrical frame. In the 2012 season, we decided it might be time to start hunting the Wide Five and Steve was ready. The only problem was, the spot that we had set up for him was invaded by cattle and our blind was destroyed. And we had also learned that another hunter across the fence was after the same buck. Now we had met a few times on the road with the other hunter that was after the deer, Cam Sutherland. And well, he made a shocking offer. He had offered Steve to go hunt his setup across the fence to see if he could get a chance at the deer. And Cam nearly insisted that Steve give it a try. Well, we're getting ready to head out for another kick at the can here. We're after a really wide five by five. Uh, we're not sure yet if he's uh, a shooter this year or not. By now, we felt that the Wide Five was a Boone and Crockett class buck, but still with possible potential to grow more. So Steve headed in to try to get a closer look. It wasn't until just that last light when Steve got that closer look at the Wide Five. He was huge and a gorgeous deer, but Steve still knew that he was likely not at his full potential and made that hard decision to let him walk. In my mind, he is definitely not a shooter. He's neat at least another year for sure, so hopefully he gets that chance to become the true whopper that he could be. And that was that. We decided for the 2012 season that he was off the hit list, and our new friend Cam offered the agreement that if we were going to let him walk another year, he would too. Steve decided quickly to pass the wide five and let him grow for another year. And discussing this with Cam, he agreed that if we were going to let him walk, he would let him walk. And later that season, we had the good fortune of repaying Cam's favor of letting Steve hunt his stand by taking Cam to one of our blinds where he took this great old buck. This deer kind of shows what can happen if guys can work together. I mean, I, I don't know how they're gonna decide who's gonna shoot the big five next year to <laughs> the thumb wrestle or something, but but I mean, there's just no, there's just no need for it, I mean, the best thing that happened out of this year is, I mean, we got a, we got a new friend. He got a great deer and he had a great time and there's there's no reason why you guys can't work together. We'll do it again. Congratulations. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. Good job, Cam. Yeah, he's a really good deer, man. Well, luckily, the Wide Five survived hunting season and the winter. And now this season, because of Cam's good sportsmanship, well, in our minds, there was only one person that was going to hunt the Wide Five this year. Right from June when we were first back on the Wide Five, it was apparent that he was going to be an incredible deer and grow once again. 
And now it was time to get set up and ready to hunt. Well, when opening day came, Cam was ready to get into the blind and start his possible season-long quest after the wide five. But little did Cam know that things were going to happen a lot faster than that. I can only imagine how excited Cam was walking in that first day to sit for a giant. We never know if a hunt's going to take three hours or three years. And with Steve running the camera heading in on that opening day, well, Cam was about to learn just how quick things can happen with proper scouting and setup. The very first deer of the 2013 season that Cam would see from the stand was the wide five. And now in person, he was absolutely huge. Now under 20 yards, broadside, and just hours into the hunt, Cam was about to get an opportunity at the deer that we've been following for years, and the best buck of his life. And there is a sight that no hunter enjoys. Years of hard work, patience, and preparation, and the giant buck is bounding away, now educated. I've been there and it's hard and it happens to everybody. But around here, when you miss the buck of a lifetime, well, you don't get off the hook quite that easy. Cam wants to talk to you. Okay. I just missed one. Just missed one? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not just missed one. He missed him at seven in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. But he was just telling me when we were driving down the road how excited he was to wait to tell his brothers <laughs> that he had missed, you know, a Budokar class typical whitetail. And I, I, I said, I said, don't worry, Cam, I'll call him for you. I'll, I'll even put it on the speakerphone and let Richie film it. Oh. Stevie and Cam went to sit for the wide, for the wide five. Yeah. I'm rolling in there about 10 after 7. Yeah. <laughs> Looking proud. Nice. Buddha Grocker class Saskatchewan Whitetail. Yeah. I don't want to steal Cam's thunder though. He's got to tell you how it went down. Uh oh. <laughs> I missed. But he looks good. <laughs> oh boy. After the miss, we didn't know how the wide five would react, but we took all our past knowledge of the deer over the previous years, and we got set up at the other end of the pasture about a mile away and hoped for the best. And uh, what we got here, this is a great spot. There's a huge run of timber to the south here, and there's a channel barely wide enough for maybe an old truck trail that kind of goes back into the timber. It comes through this opening, there's this little bit of pasture here, and then about another 80 yards to the north, there's canola fields, and across the fence, there's alfalfa fields. Having educated the wide five at the other end of the pasture on his way to feed, we knew now that our only hope may be catching him coming out to this end to the canola and alfalfa fields that we'd seen him frequent in the past. It's Sunday night. I'm supposed to be at home having supper with my wife. So she's not happy with Cam right now. <laughs> but uh, we're going to go back after the wide five that, that he missed last Tuesday. It's a blind that uh, Cam and his brother and I set up and uh, I'm pretty sure that we're done that uh, after that deer at the blind that we missed him at because he was looking right at it, but try this spot, see if we can wreck it.
Heading in for try number two is never as exciting because there's a lot of worry as to how well you've educated the deer, and if there's still even a chance for another opportunity. But as we say often, everything happens for a reason, and Cam and I head in to get settled for the afternoon. It's like that movie Joe Dirt, you can't have no in your heart. Just gotta keep on keeping on. Early in the evening, the does and fawns begin making their way from the timber, working their way towards the fields. A little later in the evening, this tall time 4x4 with multiple stickers shows up, and while certainly a mature buck, he's not the fellow we're after. Take notice of his face. Now I'm not sure if he was hit by a car, was born like that, or was just in one too many honky fights when he was younger, but his face has been severely crooked like that for the past four years that we've known of him. The tall four kept watching to our right. We look over, and there he was. The wide five had made another appearance. Again, the wide five is at under 20 yards, and Cam is going to waste no time looking for his redemption. Cam shot the buck that we call the wide five about an hour and a half ago. Uh, we stayed in the blind for about half an hour before we snuck back out to the truck here. And uh, I asked Cam right at the shot where he thought he had hit him and he said he thought he had hit him good. And to me it didn't sound like ribs. So we came back to the truck, we checked the footage and well the shot's fine. So we waited about another hour for Richie and Steve to show up and now we're just heading in to have a look for him. Right there, Cal. Oh, nice. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Holy moly. <laughs> See that, Richie? That is an unbelievable deer. That's nice something. Look at him. Well, congratulations, man. Thanks. That's Cam. pretty incredible. Well, he grew this year, and you picked up a shed last year. Yeah, I did. It's a pretty incredible animal. 
Yeah. yeah. Amazing what one year will do for them, eh? Yeah, for sure. I didn't expect this. The last two weeks before the season, he almost, I mean, he over doubled his time length, eh? Yeah, he did. It's, it's incredible how, how he finished off and he did well. And then, well, we decided that uh, we all kind of talked about it and Cam really wanted to hunt that deer. <laughs> and we thought since, you know, he, he had offered Stevie to hunt him last year at his spot that it was Cam's turn to give him a try. And that's an incredible deer, man. I'm, I'm pretty happy for you. I couldn't be happier. That's, yeah, that's no a once knows. in a lifetime deer. <laughs> Absolutely, he's a gorgeous animal. And wide and the tines, you know, like I've got big hands and look at, the, you know, the tines are three hands tall. Just before light, I poked Dean and said, there he is. And he came in and didn't miss this time. Cam, good job, buddy. Thanks, Steve. Got her done. Congratulations, bud. That's, Thanks. That's a deer of a lifetime right there. Gonna let me hunt with you next year? We'll see. <laughs> You're finding us all big deer neck. <laughs>